Congratulations on your shiny new Steam VR headset, but how do you actually set it up? That is an easy thing to answer. Now this video is for the HTC Vive and the Valve Index, but other Steam VR headsets may follow this setup procedure, but I can't speak on behalf of those like the Pimax. But let's go over what you're going to need to get everything up and running. First up, you're going to need your headset. This is an HTC Vive, and you can also use an index, and I'll show you how to set that one up too, but let's start with the Vive. In the box, you have your headset, two Base Station 1.0s. Please note that these also work for the Valve Index, and we will be using these for the Index as well. And two of your VR controllers. Before we continue, let's figure out where we're going to put our Base Stations. You will have to screw the Base Station mounts into the wall, I don't recommend using a command strip or some tape because those could fall over time and screws make sure that they are properly anchored to the wall. If you are unable to drill into the wall, you can get some tripods off of eBay or Amazon. They just need to have like these standard camera screw holes on the bottom. Let's go over the ports on the base station 1.0 because it's a it's pretty important to understand them. You have your power your channel selector, and this is only a thing for the base station ones because it allows you to change the channel so they can talk to each other properly. This is a sync cable port, and it is only used on the 1.0s if they can't see each other. And then this is a USB micro port for updating the base station's firmware. According to HTC, the best place to put your base stations is as high up on the wall as possible and pointed down roughly at a 45 degree angle where it can see the play space and the other base station. I have one set up here in one corner and another one set up over here in this corner. When tightening the base station to the mount, make sure to twist it pretty much all the way until it stops, but not quite. So the base station kind of rests right here and then we're going to use the little wing nut on the back to make sure that it's relatively flat, and then you're gonna twist the nut to tighten it so the base station doesn't move. There's also a cap back here, which you should tighten to adjust the angle. Our angle is right where we want it, so we're gonna go ahead and set that, and we're not gonna plug it in just yet. Now we're just gonna screw it in, just like that. Now it stops right here, but it's not like flat. So we're gonna turn it back towards facing down like this and then use the wing nut on the back to tighten it up. Perfect. Now one thing to know is you shouldn't touch the window on the front. And if you accidentally do, just wipe it off gently with a microfiber cloth. Now that both base stations are screwed into the wall, it's time to plug them in. Take the DC barrel connector and just plug it into the back of the unit. Now you're gonna see right here a little channel window. You wanna make sure that the channels are set to B and C if you are not using a sync cable. So we're gonna reach back here and press the button until it says B. Perfect. Now here's our second base station and we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. And then make sure its channel indicator reads C. It doesn't matter which one's set to B or C, as long as one is set to B and one is set to C, and they can see each other. If they can, the light will turn green and the laser array will light up. Ta-da! Okay, now that our base stations are plugged in, it's time to plug in the hardware for the headset to connect to the computer, install SteamVR, and get everything set up so you're ready to play. This is the link box to the HTC Vive. On the front are ports with an orange kind of uh, bevel or whatever you call it. <laughs> this is where the headset plugs in, so make sure not to plug any PC connections into this side. The back side is where you want to plug in the cables. You have your power, USB, and then HDMI. Only use the mini display port if you're on a laptop, but I've never had any experience with it, so I can't say. The HDMI connector should go directly into your graphics card and not your motherboard. If you're using a desktop, go to your graphics card. If you're using a laptop, it just kind of goes right in the back. 
Your USB connection should go into a USB 3.0 port if you have one. 2.0 does kinda work, but 3.0 has the best performance and reliability. The same thing goes with the Valve Index Trident connector, but instead of having an HDMI connection, it has a DisplayPort connection, but everything else remains the same. Plug the DisplayPort connection directly into your graphics card and not your motherboard, and plug the USB connection into a 3.0 port and not a 2.0 port. If you're using the Index on a laptop, you may need a DisplayPort to Mini DisplayPort uh, adapter. This is one I picked up off of Amazon for like five bucks, and it works great. Uh, I have no experience using a Vive with a DisplayPort connection, by the way, so I don't know how it works on a laptop. I only know how it works on a laptop with the HDMI connection by default, so your mileage may vary. Now it's time to plug in the Vive. I'm going to do the Vive first, and then we'll do the Index. Make sure the cable is pulled out entirely and is not kinked in any way. That can damage the cable and can break it, and they aren't very fun to replace. Take the orange colored connections and plug them into the link box. If you hear Windows Connected Device, uh, that's a good sign. It means it's recognizing it properly. It should download a few drivers uh, to make sure everything is up to date, but that is completely normal. As a side note, you don't have to command strip the box to your computer case like I have. Uh, it just makes it easier if it's stationary to plug everything in and out, as well as with the, uh, the Valve Index breakout connector. There are some 3D printed brackets you can get online, and those are pretty neat, but I haven't printed any out yet because my command strips just kind of work. Now it's time to set up SteamVR. Sometimes you get a little VR button up here in the corner if you plug in a VR headset, but that doesn't always happen, so we'll need to go in and download it. Click on your dropdowns and make sure the Tools section is enabled. Search SteamVR in the search window, and install it. I already have it installed, so we'll just go ahead and launch it. Now, mine didn't do this, but if you're setting this up for the first time, it's going to ask you to run room setup, so we'll go ahead and do that. But before that, let's pair our controllers, because sometimes the controllers don't come paired. So we're going to go to our little three bars, go to devices, and then pair controller. If you have any Steam Watchman dongles and you're just trying to pair controllers, make sure that they are unplugged. Now we're going to take our Vive wand and press the system button and the menu button at the same time. The light will flash blue, and then when it turns green, it means it's connected. Now we're going to do it with another one. Perfect, so now both controllers are connected. We're going to hit Done, and then go to Room Setup. This will cover room scale and not standing only, so we're going to choose room scale. Hit, make sure your area is cleared so you don't trip over anything while in VR. Click next, and then make sure that your controllers are turned on and are visible to the base stations as well as the headset. If nothing is visible, there might be something blocking your view. I have a chair in the way, so my controller is being intermittent, so let's move the chair. Now we're going to stand in the center of our play space and point the controller at our monitor and pull the trigger. Now that our monitor has been located, let's go ahead and click next. Now place both controllers on the floor and make sure that they are not rocking or moving around. Now hit calibrate floor. Now it's time to set up our room boundaries. The room boundary is relatively simple to set up. Take your controller, press and hold the trigger while tracing a boundary around your room. If you're an advanced VR user or you have a lot of room and don't want to trace the whole boundary, you can click advanced mode. And this will allow you to place four points to create a room or more points to create some sort of thing, but it's easier than tracing a boundary. Now that our room is set up, we're going to hit next. It'll do a quick calibration, and if the square is green, you're good to go. If the square is red, you may need to make some adjustments to your space. And there we go. The Vive is set up and ready to go. Now it's time to set up the index. Like I said earlier, make sure your DisplayPort connection is plugged directly into your graphics card and not your motherboard. Make sure that the USB connection is also plugged into a 3.0 connector. 
If you're using a laptop, you may need to use a mini DisplayPort to DisplayPort adapter to get the index to run properly. If you hear a device connect sound from Windows, that's normal. It's probably downloading some drivers to make sure that everything works properly. Now it's time to launch and set up SteamVR. Now mine didn't prompt for a room setup because it is already set up, but if you're running this for the first time, Steam is going to ask you to run your room setup. But first, let's pair the controllers. Go to the three bars, devices, and then pair controller. If you have any Steam Watchman dongles connected and you're trying to pair controllers, make sure that they are not plugged in so the controllers only pair to the headset. To pair an index controller, press and hold the system button and the B button at the same time. There we go, controller connected. And same thing with the other one. Controller connected. If you get a timeout error, just try again. It's It can be a little grumpy sometimes. Now let's run room setup. Select room scale. Make sure your space is cleared so you don't trip over anything while in VR. Make sure that everything is turned on and connected. If the headset isn't ready, it's probably not plugged in. If the controllers aren't ready, they aren't turned on or tracking is obscured. Stand in the center of your play space and find your monitor and pull the trigger. Select next. Place both controllers right next to each other on the floor. Select calibrate floor. and then hit next. Now it's time to create some boundaries, and there's two ways of going about doing it, regular and advanced. Regular mode involves you drawing a boundary around your space, and it looks something like this. Next, we have advanced mode. This is for larger spaces or advanced VR users. Once you're happy with the space that you've made, hit next. If the space is green, you're good to go. If it's red, you may need to do some tweaking. Once you're done, hit next and you're ready to go.